What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here. I'm moving on to another example dealing with differentiability. We have to show that this function x to the power 1 over 3 is not differentiable at an x value of 0. Now x to the power 1 over 3, I want to make a note that that's the exact same as the third root of x. Right, so you may get this function being shown like that. This and this are the exact same thing. And the way that this function looks like, let me first show you graphically, is it kind of looks like that. Okay, and what we have to show is that this function is not differentiable at that x value is zero right there. So notice this function is continuous at an x value zero. It definitely contains the point zero and zero. We could plug in zero for x, we would get a y value zero. So it's continuous there, but we have to show that it's not differentiable. And if you kind of look at it, you could kind of tell that that slope of the tangent here, it's going to be vertical. So that's what we're actually end up, going to end up getting for the limit. It's going to be positive infinity. You could kind of tell from the, uh, from the graph, but we do have to show the work. We have to show it algebraically. And to show that a function is not differentiable, we basically have to show that this limit, the definition of a derivative, doesn't exist at that certain a value. And the a value we're working with is 0, and then this is the function. So plugging in those parameters, uh, we'll have f of 0 plus h minus f of 0 all over h, then we'll have the limit as h approaches 0. Um, we'll plug in 0 plus h for this x value. So we'll have 0 plus h to the power 1 over 3 minus f of 0 is just 0, the y value is 0, all over h. And so what this is going to simplify to, 0 plus h is just h, so we'll have h to the power 1 over 3 minus 0, we don't have to write that, all over h. There's like a 1 over here. And notice that these are two exponents that are dividing with the same base, so we could subtract the exponents. So we'll have h to the power 1 over 3 minus 3 over 3. If we uh, convert that 1 to a fraction with a common denominator, and then we'll end up with h to the power negative 2 over 3. 1 over 3 minus 3 over 3 is negative 2 over 3, and we could rewrite that as 1 over h to the power 2 over 3. So this here simplifies to um, 1 over h to the power 2 over 3. Now, we can uh, we could take this function, we can graph it. I'm going to show you how the graph looks like. But if you were on a test, you don't have a graphing calculator, and you wanted to find this limit here, notice that you can't plug in 0 for h because it's going to make the denominator equal to 0. So you can't divide by 0. But what you can do is you could check what's the limit as h approaches 0 from the negative side of this function, and what's the limit as h approaches 0 from the positive side of this function. And you can make a table of values for both of these. Okay, so for this negative table, you could plug in um, h values like uh, negative 0 0.01, negative 0 0.001, negative 0 0.0001. Just getting closer and closer to that h value of 0 from the negative side. And then you can make a table here with um, h values approaching 0 from the positive side. So like 0 0.01, 0 0.0. 0, 1, or 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.0001. You could plug in these values for the function. And basically what you're going to find here is that they're actually both going to approach positive infinity. So in the last video when we dealt with a cusp, when we had these one side limits, one approach negative infinity, the other approach positive infinity, here, both of these are going to approach positive infinity. The reason why this function here, 1 over h to the power 2 over 3, 
it looks something like this. Right, so it has a vertical asymptote at zero, which is obvious. These are the h values. But notice that this function can never be negative because we have this h to the power 2 over 3. Let me write it up here. We can basically split that up as h to the power of 1 over 3 squared. So notice if the h values are positive, the third root of a positive number is a positive number, and then when we square it, that's going to give us a positive number, hence why it's above that h axis. And if h is negative, the third root of a negative number is a negative number, but then when we square it, it's going to be a positive number. Right, so this function here is always going to be above that h-axis. It's always going to be positive. Hence why this is going towards positive infinity and this is going towards positive infinity as well. And so this limit is going towards positive infinity. However, because it's not approaching a certain value, like a certain number, we say that this limit doesn't exist, right? Which means that the derivative doesn't exist at that x value is zero. Basically, the slope is going to be vertical. And the reason why it's approaching positive infinity from both sides is, remember what the uh, difference quotient does, is it finds the slope of the tangent at that point by picking points that are really close to it. So if we pick a point really close to it, but from the negative side, it's going towards positive infinity. It's gonna get, like from here to here, it's one slope, but as we get closer, that slope is going to start becoming more and more vertical, but it's still gonna stay positive, right? So that's why it's going towards positive infinity as h approaches zero from the negative side. And as we approach it from the positive side, <clears throat> that slope is also going to be positive. So like from here to here, it's positive, And then as we get closer and closer, it's going to become more and more vertical, but it's still going to stay positive. Hence why that uh, derivative is approaching positive infinity from both sides. So whenever you get positive infinity, like the derivative approaching positive infinity from both sides, or both sides approaching negative infinity, it's going to be a vertical tangent. So if it was approaching negative infinity, it would basically just be this function flipped over. So it would look something like that. Okay, then, then you're gonna have the slope of the tangent going towards negative infinity, right? So it's approaching a vertical line, but it's approaching with that slope always being negative. Right, so it's a little different. Hopefully you got that explanation. Um, but yeah, so when you run into a situation like this, where it's both positive infinity or both negative infinity, you're dealing with a vertical tangent. And that function is defined at that point. So we're actually going to be running into uh, these types of cases where um, a function is going to be discontinuous at that point. Okay, But if you run into a case like this and the function is continuous at that point, then it's a vertical tangent. And if a function is continuous but it's plus infinity and negative infinity or vice versa, negative infinity and plus infinity, then it's going to be a cusp, and we covered that in the last case.